Hello. So in this video, we are going to do a small assignment on how to calculate or create a unit hydrograph using the SCS method. So we are given the watershed area, which is five miles square or square miles. And we are also given time of concentration, which is 90 minutes. I'm going to convert that into hour. So 90 divided by 60 is 1.5 hour. And then we are given the duration. So we are asked to find the 10 minute unit hydrograph. So duration is 10 minutes. Okay, so <clears throat> the expressions that we have are QP is equal to 483.4 times area divided by TP. So remember in the SCS unit hydrograph method, we have to find QP and TP and then we will use the value for peak discharge to rescale the y-axis and we will use the value for time to peak to rescale the x-axis to get the unit hydrograph. Now we have this expression for peak discharge. We are given area which is 5 square miles and we have to find time to peak. So the expression for time to peak we have is TR divided by 2 plus T lag. Okay, so if you remember, the image I had in, in my PowerPoint, so that's the TR, so duration of rainfall. So in this problem, the duration of rainfall is not given, but we are asked to find the 10 hour or 10 minute unit hydrograph. So when we use a 10 minute unit hydrograph, what that means also is that the rainfall pulse each rainfall pulse in that unit in the rainfall hydrograph that we specify is also 10 minute okay so tr in this case is 10 minute okay so remember whenever you apply a unit hydrograph of certain duration that duration should match with the rainfall pulse, each rainfall pulse in the rainfall hydrograph, not the entire duration of the rainfall event. The unit hydrograph theory, in the unit hydrograph theory, we use the rainfall duration to derive the unit hydrograph, but when we are applying, if you go back and remember how we came up with the convolution equation, at that time we multiplied the unit hydrograph to each rainfall pulse. So, so that's something I want you to remember. The duration of each rainfall pulse should match with the duration of unit hydrograph. That's one thing. The other thing I want you to also know here is that until now, whenever we did any calculations or assignment with unit hydrograph, we used one hour, two hours, three hours, and so on. But in this assignment, we are using 10 minutes. So this again goes back to the rainfall hydrograph. If you remember in HEC HMS in all the labs that we have done, our rainfall hydrograph had a duration or the rainfall pulse in our hydrograph used to have a duration of one hour. But when we ran the model, we ran the model using a 10 minute time step or 15 minute time step. When you do that, what HEC HMS does is it converts our rainfall pulses from one hour to 10 minute pulses and at that time it will use a 10 minute rain, uh, unit hydro, hydrograph. So that's where this 10 minute is coming from. Okay, so the time step that you use, if it is 10 minute, then HEC HMS will convert your rainfall pulses to 10 minute 
duration okay so now that we know what our tr here is so tr is 10 minutes divided by 2 so that will become 5 minute and we are going to convert this into hours so i divided by 60 and our t lag is 0 0.6 times tc so tc is 1.5 hour okay so if you do all this the answer that i have got is 0 0.983 hour okay so we know what our tp is we know what our area is then we can find out what our discharge is going to be so qp is equal to 483.4 times area which is 5 divided by time to peak 0 0.983 and if you solve that you will get your answer for qp which is in cubic feet per second i'm i'm going to go ahead and give it to you so i will round the number up so that will be 2458 cubic feet per second so that's the peak discharge that's the time to peak the question now is how to construct the unit hydrograph using the SCS unit hydrograph method. Now to construct the unit hydrograph method we have two options. One option is we go back to our original SCS unit hydrograph which is this and you just scale the y-axis by multiplying it by QP which in this case is 2458 CFS and you rescale the x-axis by multiplying it by TP which in this case is 0 0.983 and when I say multiply x-axis and y-axis what I basically mean is multiply this column the second column that you see here by QP multiply the first column by TP and you get your unit hydrograph okay so this will be our curvilinear unit hydrograph if you don't want a curvilinear unit hydrograph if you want a simpler triangular unit hydrograph what you can do is let me just insert a blank slide what you can do is you can construct your own triangular unit hydrograph if you don't have all the values along the curvilinear dimensionless unit hydrograph so this will be t so you construct a triangle so the peak of this triangle is our qp which is 2458 cfs this is zero this is zero the time to peak in this case is 0 0.983 the time to base will be 2.67 times tp which is 0 0.983 and whatever that value is i'm i'm thinking it will be close to 2.6 um, and once you have this triangle you can find out values along the rising and and the falling limb so this is a linear line you can just find the slope of this and get the values here so u1 u2 u3 so u3 is 2458 which is our peak so u4 u5 u6 and then you got your unit hydrograph which is a triangle in this case so regardless of whether you use this triangle or a scaled version of a curvilinear unit hydrograph you are fine so either option of using a triangle or a curvilinear unit hydrograph is fine in this case all you need is QP and TP which is what we estimated here in this assignment okay so that's all about this assignment since we started relating some of these to HEC HMS I also wanted to mention in HEC HMS 
the parameter that we always used with with application of SCS unit hydrograph was T lag. Okay, so in this case, the time of concentration was given to us, and we were able to calculate the time of TP using time to lag, which again used the time of concentration. So in many models, or at least in Hake HMS, we used the lag time as a parameter, which means we adjusted that value to match our model output with observed data. If you don't do that, you there is a way to also estimate lag time using time of concentration and the expression for the time of concentration I showed you in my previous video. So when we used the SCS method in Hake HMS, we always specified our lag time. Um, and if you look at this expression, besides lag time, you also need the duration of rainfall. And that duration of rainfall always came from the rainfall pulses we specified in our Hake HMS model and the time step we specified. So that's how Hake HMS used this SCS method um, whenever we did all our simulations. So with that, I'll stop here and I hope you know now how you can construct a SCS unit hydrograph and how this unit hydrograph was used in all the Hake HMS simulations we have done so far. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this and if you have any questions feel free to email me. Thank you and bye.